Hey guys, it's Nikki, uh, Fat and Flabulous, if you forgot, because I've been gone for such a long time. Um, I, I'm terrible, guys. Like, I mean, I haven't, like, I've been busy, but I haven't, I haven't been that busy to make a video and at least give you guys my numbers every week, but um, I think my last video was week uh, 26 or 27. And I'm on week 32 now, so that's that's a long time. I think the last time I updated, it was right before I went camping, and that was <clears throat> that was like over a month ago now. So um, I'll just start with the numbers for now. The other reason that I haven't been on is because I, there hasn't really hasn't been much to talk about, and I'll get to that in a second. Um, so I had surgery, R and Y gastric bypass at Humber River in Toronto on February 11th, 2013. Uh, before my pre-op diet, my highest weight was 281 pounds. Uh, before surgery, I was 265 pounds. Um, the last time I updated, I was at 100 pounds lost. And in one, two, three, four, five, six weeks, I only lost another eight pounds. Um, and for the last for the last uh, three weeks or so, I haven't lost anything. So I went camping, I gained two pounds when I went camping, um, but the week after that, I lost seven pounds. So I got back on track and I have been on track, but I'm in some kind of stall right now. Um, I mean, I've, it's been fluctuating two, three pounds up, two, three pounds down, two pounds up, one pound down one pound up, three pounds down. So um, currently I am 107, 173 pounds, um, which puts me at a loss for 108 pounds. Um, people have been asking me how much I've lost since my 100 pound video. I just told them 110 because it's a nice round number, but really it's 108. Um, yeah, there. like as far as the, the weight loss goes. I'm in a stall right now. Um, I don't know what else to tell you guys about that. Uh, I'm doing everything that I always have been. Um, there really, really isn't much different. Like, as far as what I'm eating, I'll have like an egg or two in the morning or a protein shake because I've, I've gotten back into the protein shakes. I couldn't do them for the longest time. But um, I found some alternatives that um, are helping me actually get them down. Um, and the one tip that I got was to use sugar-free pudding powder. And it makes the protein shakes actually tolerable. It pretty much eliminates the protein taste for me. That was, that was my big thing, was the taste, of, the taste and the smell of protein. Ugh. Unless it's like meat or something like that, that's that's fine. Like I can eat meat and cheese and cottage cheese and all that uh, stuff like yogurt. That's not a problem. But protein powder, protein bars, I still, there's only like one, maybe two kinds of protein bars that I, that I like. Um, one of them is Simply Whey and there's only one flavor that I prefer and that's the apple cinnamon one. Um, Really, that, that's the only protein bar I will eat, um, and I'll eat the whole thing. Um, other protein bars, like, I'll open one up and say, I'm going to eat this, or I'm going to eat half, or something. I take one bite, and I, it's just, it's maybe the texture of them, too. I just, I can't do them, guys. Like, so many people um, like the Quest Bars, and I wish I liked the Quest Bars, but I find them way too dense. They're too dense. The thing about the Simply Whey um, protein bars are that it's almost like, kind of like a Rice Krispie texture. So it's light and you know, it's not, it's not dense and heavy and thick, but um, I mean, I keep trying the Quest bars. Um, there's some that I haven't tried yet. Maybe I should try, but to me, when it comes to protein bars, I feel like 
I'm eating a chocolate bar. And right now that is the last thing that I want. Like there's the, um, the chocolate chip cookie dough one. I thought I would love it. I mean, I can eat a bite or two and then I don't even finish it. I end up throwing it away and it's such a waste. So, and they're expensive. They're so expensive. So almost like three bucks for one protein bar. Mm, guys, I can't do it. Um, but the Simply Way ones, I will eat the whole thing in one sitting. Um, I love them. I've had a lot lately, so I'm getting a little bit sick of them, but it's the only one I can tolerate right now. Um, as far as protein shakes, um, using that, that sugar-free pudding powder definitely helps. Um, I made one today with uh, mixed berries, a little bit of milk, a scoop of vanilla protein powder, which I hate. I hate vanilla protein powder, but the berries mask it. So I put a, like a half a cup of berry, like mixed frozen berries in there. And I put a teaspoon or a little less than a teaspoon because you don't need much of uh, sugar-free cheesecake pudding powder. And I blend it up with some ice and it's fabulous. It's so good. So, 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 so good. It does not taste like a protein shake. It tastes more like a smoothie. Um, I think the other thing is when it comes to protein shakes and you're limited to chocolate or vanilla, and yes, you can, <clears throat> you can add um, sugar-free sweeteners um, to change the taste a little bit. But when you still taste the chocolate and the vanilla, I just, ugh, I can't do it, guys. It's just, I don't know. I will say that the pudding powders, whether it's chocolate pudding powder in a chocolate protein shake, or um, I used pistachio, sugar-free pistachio pudding powder in a vanilla shake, those were tolerable. But I think that's only because of the, the, um, the pudding powders. So the tip that I got, I, I think I was just looking on YouTube for ways to make protein shakes taste better. And um, I got that tip and I thought, you know what, what the hell, I'll try it. And if it works, then great. If not, then oh well. Um, <clears throat> but I tried it and it really, really does help. So if you're having a problem with protein shakes, try a little bit of pudding powder in your protein shake. You really don't need much at all. You need like like half a teaspoon and that's all it takes. Um, it, it doesn't completely get rid of the protein taste, but it eliminates it to, you know, so that it's tolerable, basically. Um, as far as clothing, uh, right now I am wearing anywhere from a medium to an extra large shirt. Um, I don't like them to be super super tight. I have been, I have some that are they're pretty tight like I wear out if I'm I'm going out or something but um, for just everyday clothing sometimes I'll wear an extra large or a large um, just because they're more roomy and they're more comfortable. Um, as far as pants go I'm wearing a 12 or 13 um, and I can do a skinny jean so that's fun. Um, other than that um, clothing. I mean, I've been in the same sizes for the last maybe two months or so, but, um, yeah. So that's where I am with my clothing. Um, <clears throat> I wanted to talk a little bit about a party that I'm going to at the end of October. It's a Halloween costume ball. Highly recommend going if you're in the Toronto, Burlington, uh, Hamilton area. Uh, it's in Hamilton and it's put on by hauntedhamilton.com, haunted-hamilton.com and uh, it's a costume ball. They have prizes and there's um, a buffet and everything. It's just like a cold buffet and little desserts and stuff. Um, <clears throat> I rarely ever eat any of the food there because it's just like sandwiches and stuff and when it comes to this party George and I, we go all out. Um, maybe one day I'll show you some of our previous costumes. Um, but I, I'm i working on a costume this year that is going to rock the party. Um, we always try to go for the win. <clears throat> That's why we 
we probably spend like close to three hundred dollars because we get a makeup artist to do our makeup um, as far as the costumes go uh, sometimes we buy costumes and change it up a bit like change like don't just buy a costume and wear it how it comes we'll change it up like <clears throat> or I'll um, go to Value Village and make my own costume so that's what I've been doing so far and um, I actually haven't spent a dime on it yet um, I'm going to be Reagan from The Exorcist um, and I built a backpack bed so basically it's gonna look like I'm laying in the bed but I'll actually be standing up and it's got like I tore apart an old backpack and I attached it onto um, the back panel of the bed and put some straps so it would hold up and um, <clears throat> it's gonna be awesome because when my makeup's done and I have the wig on and I bought some uh, theatrical contact lenses um, to make me look possessed it's gonna be pretty cool I'll, um, I'll definitely be posting some pictures for you guys because <clears throat> It's going to be awesome. And George is going to be uh, the priest. <laughs> so that's, uh, that's what I wanted to talk about there. Um, again, if you want to come, support this company because they are amazing. They do a whole bunch of ghost walks and stuff um, in Hamilton, Niagara area. They do bus trips. They do a haunted boat tour in Hamilton. Um, they're awesome. Again, it's hauntedhamilton.com haunted-hamilton.com uh, make sure you put the dash in otherwise you're gonna um, get the fake site um, so yeah another thing I wanted to talk about um, it's kind of early for this but um, I was thinking of doing a potluck Christmas party at my house so if there's anybody in the area that would be interested in coming um, just let me know because I want to if there's a good amount of people that would like to come then I'll put it on and if not then um, I don't know maybe I'll just get together with my bitches and we'll just go out somewhere um, there's not much else to talk about other than I'm parched it's uh, just after 1 a.m. here so <clears throat> I just um, Got home from work a little while ago, and uh, yeah. Um, another thing I wanted to talk about was that I am planning on doing another video, um, if not tomorrow, then maybe on Tuesday, because uh, I got a lot of stuff going on tomorrow. But um, <clears throat> I want to do a video showing the comparison between what I look like with clothes and the grotesque disgustingness that lies beneath. Um, I, I'm not going to be full on buck naked or anything. I'm going to just come on here in like a bra and some like tight shorts or something and show you all of my excess skin um, and how my clothes mask it. I get a lot of compliments saying how good I look and oh you don't have a lot of excess skin and whatever. I'm going to show you what I have. Um, so stay tuned for that. Um, it's a little bit nerve wracking. I'll show you me with clothes and then me without clothes and with all my skin and stuff. I'll show you a little preview right here. Okay, so these, this is my arms. You can see where my arms are supposed to be, and if this wasn't here, they would actually look normal. Oh my god. But no, I have this waddle arm that just, it keeps getting worse, worse and worse and worse. Um, I guess I could share with you guys, let me just move my screen over. Um, please don't screw up the video. Okay, if it screws up, I'm sorry, and goodbye. Um, hold on, let's just get this thing open here. Okay, so, before surgery, um, I did my measurements, and um, I did...
did my measurements again on the last time I did them was August 11th so uh, it's over a month but I probably won't do them again for another month because I was doing them every two months or so I think so I'll go through all of my measurements and um, show you what I've lost so basically uh, my neck before I started which I, I don't know about you guys, but I am forever playing with my collarbone. Like, I'll sit at work and I'm just like, nee, 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 nee. <laughs> and I try to like, like my chest is like sunken in almost. And this here, like, I don't have that. Look at this. <laughs> I got some weird shit going on in here. <laughs> okay, anyway. So before surgery, my neck was 16 inches, and now it is 13.5. Uh, my upper arm was 18.5 inches, and now it is 14.5. My lower arm was 12 inches, and now it is 10.5. My chest, get this, my chest, so not like under my bust, but my around my chest was 51.5 inches and is now 40.5 inches it's crazy and I think it has something to do with the fact that my boobs have gone from here to here <laughs> that could be it but I mean I do the measurements with a bra and so it's it's fine I don't have one on right now so I'm just gonna stay like this um, my waist this is another big one like I I don't know guys, uh, it was 45 inches and now it is 34 inches, which I'm pretty sure it's less now. I think it's more like 33 or 32 um, because I'm wearing a size 12. I can fit anywhere between 11 and 13. 14 is, is a little loose on me now, but um, anywhere between 11 and 13 depending on the cut and style and brand and all that. Uh, my hips were 55 inches and are now 42.5 inches. My upper leg was 31 inches and is now 23.5 inches. My lower leg, 19.5 uh, inches at the start and is now 16 inches. My legs, my legs are still fat. Like, if I, I like, I would never wear shorts. Not yet, anyway. Um, the other thing is, there's a lot of there's a lot of excess skin down there and it just looks hangy like I'll show you uh, in my next video but right now like if I stand up straight my upper leg skin folds over top of my knee and it's disgusting um, so I'm looking forward to getting rid of that I need to do some squats and leg exercises or something um, so that's a total loss of 52 inches exciting um, I also went to see my surgeon here we can move this over now I went to see my surgeon um, on Monday it's now Thursday well Friday technically because it's after 1 a.m. Um, and he actually gave me a goal weight which he never did before so my goal weight for myself is 130 pounds that puts me at a normal BMI, um, pretty much smack dab in the middle for my height and, um, and age and everything. His goal weight for me is 160 pounds. And I was kind of shocked when he said that. Um, he was thrilled with my progress. Um, he said I was doing amazing. He was surprised I had lost over 100 pounds, which, I mean, it's been about eight months now. And uh, 100 pounds in eight months, that's great, but... I've seen, like other people have gotten, have lost a lot more than that um, in th that amount of time, but he seems to think that my goal weight should be 160 pounds. Right now, at 173 pounds, I feel comfortable. If I was to stay like this, I think I would be happy, but I do want to get to my own goal, which is 130 pounds. His goal of 160 pounds means that I only have 13 pounds to lose. And I asked him, I said, uh, is 130 pounds really that unrealistic for me? 
and right away he said, yep. I was kind of taken aback because 130 pounds would make me a normal weight, a normal BMI. Um, th like there's a lot of friends that I have, they're the same height, the same age as me, and they're less than 130 pounds. And they don't look sickly thin or anything. They look normal, even not 130 pounds. And I just want to be, I think if I was 130 pounds, I would feel more normal. I'm happy with where I am now, but I still feel like I still have fat days. And I don't want to have those days. I don't want to have those days anymore. So <clears throat> I'm kind of, um, I don't know what the word is. Like, I don't, I don't really know what I should follow. I mean, this surgeon is an expert in this surgery and the whole lifestyle. And for him to tell me that 160 pounds would be a good thing, and to stay at 160 pounds and maintain at 160 pounds, I wonder if it is kind of unrealistic for me to actually get to 130 pounds. I was 281 pounds. That's not normal. 160 pounds? That's pretty average, I would say. Um, I think for somebody who's 130 pounds and has been 130 pounds forever or since they've been an adult, it's normal for them and it's what they're used to. But because I was so big, for most of my life, 160 pounds, that would mean eight, 118, like almost 120, around 120 pounds. I don't have a calculator and I'm really tired, so I'm not going to do the actual calculation, but about 100, losing 120 pounds after weight loss surgery, I think it's pretty damn good, especially if you're happy with how you look and how you feel. Um, what you can do, all the NSVs that you've accomplished um, in such a short amount of time. Because guys, eight months compared to the rest of my life, I'm 29. Eight months is nothing. Nothing. I think it would, I would be more successful to maintain at 160 pounds than I would at 130. To just, like just being realistic about it, I think 160 pounds makes sense and to be 130 pounds I mean that's only 30 pounds more but I think if I was to push myself and push myself to get to 130 and something ever happened where I started to creep back up and I went up to 140 and then 150 and then 160 I think it'll be harder to stop again and main, try to maintain at 160. I think I'm thinking way too much into this, um, and I am going to try for my goal of 130 pounds. But if I can, if my body, like right now, I, for three weeks I've maintained at 173 pounds. So I don't know, guys. Maybe. Maybe my body's just starting to slow down. I don't know. Um, I'm not doing anything different. I mean, yes, I'm incorporating a few more carbs into my diet, but I'm still getting all the protein that I, I need. I'm getting all my water in. I'm taking all my vitamins. I'm doing everything right. Um, there's the odd time where I'll have a treat, but that's all it is, is a little treat. Uh, like if George and I go out for dinner, we'll get a dessert, I'll have like a bite or two, and then he eats the rest. Just to have you know, a taste, right? I'm not gonna go the rest of my life eating perfectly. I think that is unrealistic. I can try and try and try while I'm in my weight loss phase, but I think right now, it's okay. It's okay to have a, a bite of something sweet every once in a while or 
a slice of pizza or you know I, I wouldn't do it all the time you know what I'm saying like I always make my own lunch at home I make my own dinners um, I do breakfast but once in a while if we're out and about or whatever um, I always bring my protein bar with me or I'll bring um, I always have my lemon lime crystallite because that's the that's the only thing I drink really because since surgery I've become lactose intolerant and um, I can't drink milk anymore <laughs> well that's not true I still drink milk but then I pay for it it's uh, it's not pretty but yeah I don't know guys there's so many things that you really don't think of before you get into surgery yeah you do all your research I, I did so much research on this watching other people's videos and reading articles and everything but until you're actually you've actually had the surgery and are living it you think back to before and it's like I knew nothing I knew nothing about this surgery like not nothing but you know what I mean right it's it's so different when you're living it um, yeah the honeymoon phase you know you feel great as the, the pounds are going down and then it starts to slow down even though you're still doing everything right and sometimes it makes you second-guess yourself but at the same time I really don't want to stress about it you know like yeah, I had a few bites of pizza the other day. I'm the one who has to live with that. Not anybody else. I'm not gonna feel bad about it. Yeah, I shouldn't have had it. Right now, anyway. But I didn't have, you know, a whole half a pizza. I had part of one slice of pizza. It's, it's different, like, it's portion control, it's knowing when to stop. The other thing is you sometimes have no choice but to stop because your tummy is only this big. Um, <clears throat> cravings are different. Oh my god, this video is 27 and a half minutes. I better wrap it up, guys. Okay, I will come on, um, yes, this is a slinky. I, I play with it all the time when I'm doing videos or if I'm just on my computer watching videos it's like I need to have it here or I don't know anyway I'm really tired so I'm gonna go now and I w I'm starting to lose my voice even <clears throat> so I will see you guys maybe tomorrow or on Tuesday uh, yeah so Good to see you guys. I really need to catch up on videos because I'm so far behind, guys. I'm, I'm watching some videos, but I don't even comment because half the time I'm watching a video and then I have to go right away. So, yeah. I'm watching your videos. Um, thank you. I've gotten a whole bunch of subscribers lately. I don't know. And it's, it's from a bunch of people who don't or who aren't even making videos. So, I don't know if they're just random people or if they're actually weight loss people because I haven't really had time to look into it or subscribe back I'm sorry but um one of these days I'll um I'll uh yeah whatever I'm so tired okay bye YouTube I'll see you soon love you all